Okay, welcome to the third of my uh, videos on the programming of art, in which we're going to create a generative art system and accidentally learn some programming uh, concepts as we go. This is part of the Robust Tools class that I'm currently teaching. Um, so, as a reminder, this is where we're up to. We're trying to create this thing, these sorts of pictures that are drawn as a collection of paths that, un that are unfold over time or are traced out over time. So we're working inside an RStudio Cloud project, so I'll click on this to open it. Um, uh, I've got it open over in another tab right now. But what we've been doing as we've gone is trying to learn a few things about uh, lists and tibbles, about random numbers, and then last time I talked about uh, flow controls. We talked about while loops, so how do you get your code to go around in circles, ifs to work out when the code should run only if uh, a particular condition or something holds true. So we're now just going to continue down the path of doing our artwork and see where that takes us. Maybe we'll, we'll learn something new, maybe we'll just get pretty pictures, either way is fine by me really. Yes, so this is where we left things. I'll just clear the screen. There's the picture of some boring dots I got. Let's go back over to the code that I've been uh, writing bit by bit. So the setup here is we're loading our packages. We're building up a set of parameters that describe our artwork. We created the initial state um, and we have uh, a, a process here that will allow us to do something to modify that state over and over and over again um, until we get to the end the end of time or the end of our steps. At the moment it's not doing for anything particularly interesting, right? Because if I went uh, to you know draw say um, instead of using art dat I just used um, the state variable. So this is the ggplot code I used to draw that scatter plot that you're uh, currently seeing in your top right corner. If I go state, it's really uh, not at all different. The, it has drawn something. If you notice, the x-axis labels have changed because the only thing that's happened inside this loop as I was changing the state is I've just moved the x-axis uh, along. I've just shifted the plot across. And that's not an amazingly interesting way of making art. So let's try and do something a bit more interesting than that, shall we? Okay, so um, what I um, am going to try to do is have this. I'm going to use some tricks from the ambient package to make this kind of handy. Handy. To make this pretty, I'm going to do something pretty involving the ambient package. But first off, um, I'm going to need to modify s something in here to ensure that whatever changes I make to the state actually get saved as I go. So let's just drop that print statement that we don't need. and. Uh, We'll give this some code here, so we'll go, um, we'll code comment, check, that was the code here that let us, that taught us um, whether we needed to stop. If we should stop, and my typing is terrible, okay. Now, as we've modified the state, what we should do is, if you can remember back from the dplyr uh, series, is modify, have something that says, well, couldn't we um, take the new state that we just created here and kind of stick it onto the bottom or concatenate it on, on underneath uh, this, um, the art data structure. So essentially we're going to have this art dat object that's going to grow inside the loop. Every time the loop goes forward it's going to grab the current state and chuck it on the bottom. Um, this is not usually considered the best of programming practices but I'm going to do it this way anyway for now. So let's go uh, append the state to the to art dat. And if you can remember back from how uh, from 
the early videos, the way that we would do that is just with uh, bind rows. Um, so we go, sorry, art dat is equal to, uh, there we go, bind, so this is from dplyr, bind rows. So we would take the existing uh, value of art dat and then we would just append the state to the bottom. Okay, All right, so now, uh, if I run this code, so Control Shift S to source, we run it, and now if we just have a look at art dat, the key thing is this is now a forty thousand by four tibble, so that you know there's uh, every single time we've iterated, um, we're iterating here mean done another step, um, it's just chucked it on the end, so our art dat is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Awesome. So let's uh, write a little bit of code at the end now, just because it'd be nice to see what we're actually creating, right? So I will get, uh, so we'll have another section and we will have this one be called Control Shift R, so we can do this, um, draw the picture. So what I'm going to do is I will say at the end we will go pick uh, it's ggplot and the data it will take as data the um, the art the full da art dat data frame and we will say it has mapping of course everything has a mapping uh, and the aesthetic will be x equals x y equals y and for now that's good enough uh oh no that's well you know yeah for now that's good enough <laughs> plus g on point okay so it's just going to be a scatter plot we're not doing anything fancy very often this is how my art actually starts i just draw scatter plots and then we'll have it go print pick so that at the end we can see what it looks like okay so we now have our art that comes in uh, several sections. We've got the preliminaries to get ourselves set up. We're getting, we're creating the initial state, which I think of as setting up the canvas. We then have our painting uh, loop that's just going to create the, the art inside a loop, and then it's going to draw a picture at the end. Again, at the moment, our painting step is really, really boring. Every single path is just going to be drawing a horizontal line. So if I go Control Shift S to source it, we get an extremely ugly looking plot. Um, it's you can just barely see it. The, the, all of these dots here uh, form something that we would call a line, right? But um, they're taking up so much space that you can barely see anything. Okay, so maybe G on point wasn't the best way to do this. Oh dear. Well, instead of that, we will make it a G on path. So a path is just going to trace out every uh, every single element. So like it's just going to draw one line rather than try to draw dots, lots and lots of dots. So that seems like a better idea. Okay, cool. So let's do that. This should give us a better picture, right? Right? Hmm. So taking us a moment. Do, 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 do. And. Okay. Well, that's not any better. Why is that not any better? Okay. The reason it's not any better is that what I haven't done is tell it to treat each of those path IDs as a separate line. Currently, it is drawing one ridiculously long line that has 40,000 segments in it, so it's gone and that's why it took so terribly long. What if instead we want to say, no, no, I asked for, what I actually asked for if we scroll up to the parameter settings is I want 500 different lines and each line should be 80, uh, um, I have length 80. Okay, so here is a ggplot thing that I didn't explain in the um, visualization things. What I want to be able to do is tell uh, our how to group each of the um, uh, group things into distinct entities. So what I want to say is the grouping, so group 
is equal to um, path ID. In other words, what I want to say is that when I do my geom path, I want one path per uh, per path ID. That was the whole idea of calling it a path ID. Okay, so let's have a look at that. We save it, we source it, and okay, now we're getting uh, a little closer, right? So you can kind of see that now we have something that must be just horizontal lines. They're a little hard to read. Um, I mean, if I kind of make this uh, bigger, you can sort of see what's going on. Maybe what I should do is um, give it a parameter. So, or, so I will just say that, well, let's, let's make the width of those lines just a half length. And while I'm at it, I'm also going to give it a transparency. So the transparency of the lines is its alpha level. And I'm just going to give it 0.5. So it's basically each of the lines is a bit, bit see-through and that's a kind of nice thing to do when making generative art um, because it gives things a bit of a sense of depth and thickness because you can have multiple lines drawing on top of each other. Okay, so we'll go again, Control shift s to source it and okay, it's still um, just a bunch of uh, line, like horizontal lines over the top of each other, but it, now we've at least got some color, some variation in shading and so on. So we've got something which is, you know, well, let's call it progress, shall we? <laughs> okay, so we have something that will draw a picture for us. Awesome. Now, can we do something more interesting than just increment the X uh, value? Well, what I could do is have it add uh, a purely random, um, you know, just use R unif to do the random number generation, uh, like I did right at the beginning. But what I'm going to do instead is something that I'm just going to call magic, um, meaning just take this one on faith for a moment. Um, I'll explain it, but don't sweat it. Um, so I'm going to say, first off, each of those paths is going to uh, take each of those paths is going to take a step. So we'll call it make a step. And we're going to ca calculate the step using the, the ambient package. So step has a handy little function in it called curl noise. And curl noise is a way of generating stuff that kind of looks loopy and curly and it's quite flexible. You can do lots of things with it. It needs to be given some input, so I'll give it a, it needs to be, the, so that it has a generator argument. Um, I am just going to say, believe me for the moment when I say gen, uh, I'm going to use gen simplex probably, that's usually what I use. Um, so that's just the name of an underlying multi-dimensional noise, blah, 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 blah. This bit is not part of the robust tools class. It's the bit that we need to make the artwork do something kind of interesting. Okay, so now what I'm going to need to do is, um, <coughs> sorry, uh, okay, so we'll go, it needs to be given some x uh, coordinates. So the curl noise unfolds in multiple dimensions. So for now we'll do it in two dimensions and it needs to be given some x coordinates to work with. So let's just say it'll read the uh, x coordinate of our state tibble. So remember, dollar lets me just is a simple way of me pulling out the x value from that. And the y can be state y. Um, and it will also need uh, a seed. So uh, the, the multi-dimensional noise generators, because it'll keep generating lots of independent, well, separate random numbers every single time. Um, if I want it to follow a single, uh, call it a curl field, if you like, um, but um, I need to make sure that it always has the same seed in there. So I'll go seed. So again, we'll read this straight off of our parameter list. So our par grab the seed and stick it in there. Okay, so I'll just um, grab this code here and just go like this. So we'll see what make a step actually does. So I've just 
control enter to just run that section and control L clear the screen and let's have a look at what's inside step okay so step has is now a whole data frame or table it's uh, of its own gosh it's long and it has X and Y coordinates and these things can be thought of as these are directions that we're going to move uh, on our step so instead of doing having our mutate step just being I will add a constant number to X what I'll instead do is add something from that ah uh, step dollar huh, what do you know step dollar X and for now I'm just going to kind of go um, on divided by a thousand I don't want it to get uh, you'll notice that these are big numbers so that sorry if you can see down here uh, 3.69 um, these are gonna be taking really big steps for now I'm just gonna put in an arbitrary number to say let's take some um, smaller steps so that we get something that looks a little smoother okay add in another line there go so y is y plus step y x so now our mutate uh, step is modifying both the x and the y coordinates and it's using this magic curl noise thing to do it in an interesting way and so now if I go and run the exact same thing so control shift s to source it oh hello pretty okay we have something that looks curly and artistic um, it's kind of annoying though right so I mean first off this is generally what a curl field looks like it gives you things that look a little bit like that see it's curling around and loops and things and I liked the thought of when I introduced loops I would have some art that drew loopy curly things yeah I realize I'm overthinking it there is a bit of a problem with our picture though so again this is maybe another excuse to learn a new ggplot thing if I just squish my screen over there like that now it's kind of a bit distorted right so on the y-axis 0 to 2 covers lots but on the x-axis 0 to 2 only covers a little bit what I would really like to do is set, let ggplot know that I want these things to be on the same scale so as it turns out ggplot2 being a rather good package uh, has a fairly simple way of doing that so if you just to have a look at our codes we've got ggplot uh, plus g on path so what I will do now is add one new thing to it plus chord equal and that's just gonna say the x and i coordinates have to be x and i y coordinates have to be on the same scale Control shift s we run that and now you see you always get a square so even if I resize all the way over here like that it's still not going to make it uh, um, not a square if I go like that then we get a little bit taking up a little bit more room this seems to be the beginnings of something that looks like you know workable decent art um, yay this kind of makes me happy um, as a general rule I like being happy and I like uh, having stuff that makes nice art so um, I will I think uh, stop there um, for the mo uh, and come back and then we'll talk a little bit about things that we can do to make this a little closer to the original image and in doing so I'll you know introduce a couple of new uh, concepts from um, ggplot and uh, a couple of new things uh, associated with uh, the pipe okay uh, but I'll stop for now I'll stop here uh, again the takeaway exercise is do it yourself play around with this see if you can get some interesting pictures because now we've got enough code that you actually can do some cool pictures in, on your own just by changing some of these things like if I just here I'll give you one example of how we can change it instead of the seed being two let's make the seed 200 and run it again and this gives you a slightly different picture it's not again the most exciting uh, form of variation but if I, I could uh, alternatively say what if I have 
five paths that I run for 800 steps. I have no idea what this is going to do. Okay, that gives you some scrawly things like that. That's not amazingly interesting, but anyway, you can play around with these parameters and see what you get. And that's you know what I'll leave you with for this one. Okay, I'll come. I'll be back and with the continuation of this art class.